If there ever were a place on Earth we'd expect to be pristine, it's here, the Amazon. Covering an area the size of Australia, the region is a world icon of biodiversity. And more than this, the Amazon's complex ecosystem has a global impact. The forest acts as a huge carbon store and generates patterns of rainfall way beyond its own borders. Which is why the eyes of the world are fixed on the environmental war between developers and conservationists. One side is pressing to exploit the region to satisfy the world's hunger for timber, beef and soya. The other is fighting to preserve what they see as the largest remaining wilderness on Earth. But new discoveries are challenging the basic beliefs of both sides in this battle. Many people still today have an image of the Amazon as pristine forest. Archaeology is showing us a very different image. There are archaeological sites in the Amazon which are larger than contemporary cities. We suggest something like around five to six million people in the Amazon in the 16th century. The idea of an essentially untouched environment is being questioned. Since the first humans started settling into the Amazon, they started transforming the environment. To many, these new ideas are downright dangerous. It's misreading history, for one thing, and it's encouraging the developers to come and, and denude it because they said if it was done once, you can do it again, it'll all grow back. But to others, the truth is not negotiable. One thing we know is that there were, in prehistory, complex societies from the north, south, east, and west. And the bottom line is that to deny that is to deny the reality of the Amazonian past. With the threats to the rainforest ever increasing, there is much riding on how natural the Amazon really is. Is the forest virgin or man-made? Since Europeans first encountered the Amazon in the 16th century, it has presented an enigma. Sometimes it appeared to be a lush paradise, and sometimes a green hell. It's been seen as a place abounding in life, but also as a hostile emptiness. The history of humanity's dealings with these mysterious forests has been a history of shifting ideas. It's the last wilderness. It's a business opportunity. It's the lungs of the planet. And every so often a new idea appears and surprises everyone. This is the first documentary ever made in the Amazon. It was shot in 1922 by a Portuguese filmmaker called Silvino Santos. And it astonished its audience. It showed an Amazon teeming with human activity. He showed an Amazon that was populated, full of production. It had all sorts of fish. It had rubber, it had Brazil nuts. We have a scene of a factory. It's amazing, you know, the way that Silvino shows that. Even today, people don't believe it, you know. People don't believe that that's, that's the Amazon. This film was the first challenge to popular notions of the Amazon as a sparsely populated virgin wilderness. It's really a, a modern region, 
you know, is not something that is from another time, because that's another vision of the Amazon, isn't it? It's something that is pristine. It's, it's you know, it's 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 um, it's from another another era, really. The popular vision of the Amazon as pristine dates back to the period after the Age of Discovery, when Europeans had encountered unfamiliar new lands. These sorts of concepts of pristine really had to do with their, con their conception of land tenure. And so if they didn't see people actually fencing in the land, cutting all the trees down, burning up the land and converting it into, say, cattle pastures or, or uh, other sorts of major landscape transformations, then they often didn't consider there to be any kind of land use going on and therefore these, these landscapes could be uh, called primeval, pristine, virgin, what have you. In Latin, it was called terra nullius the land of nobody. Von Humboldt was one of several naturalists with that kind of idea. Alexander von Humboldt was a German scientist and explorer who promoted the idea of the Amazon as a virgin paradise after visiting the region in 1800. He'd been impressed by the sheer abundance of the forest. One may almost regard man as not being essential to the order of nature. The earth is loaded with plants and nothing impedes their free development. Here, in a fertile country adorned with eternal verdure, we seek in vain the traces of the power of man. In Humboldt's mind, the indigenous people had no lasting impact on the forest in which they lived. He encouraged a number of artists to visualize his highly romanticized view of the Amazon and its people. The indigenous people are grouped in with nature itself as, as if they are part of the background scene to a pristine environment. And that gives us, in the case of the Amazon, which indeed had very low population densities, scattered, pop scattered settlements of forest peoples, a seeming aura of uh, primeval uh, nature, untouched by human hands and particularly untouched by agrarian technologies which have the effect of altering environments and managing them for human purposes. By considering the indigenous people as part of nature, Europeans were able to envision an untouched, pristine forest. This view of the Amazon and its people has dominated the way that most of us have thought about the region ever since. It was the view that the American geographer Hamilton Rice brought with him to the Amazon in 1925. The age of exploration is not yet over. Great areas still exist awaiting investigation. Besides being the largest river in the world, the Amazons flows through the greatest forest. No more savage wilderness exists anywhere on Earth. In this forest, the trees are so thick, the jungle so tangled, the swamp so extensive, that it is impossible to travel except along rivers many times difficult of navigation. Hamilton Rice set out to map the Amazon wilderness with the latest technologies. The Hamilton Rice expedition was super well equipped with a hydroplane to have the aerial views and um, also they had a radio system. So it was a big, big enterprise. The new auxiliary method of exploration and surveying, namely photography from the air, was successfully employed in the exploration of difficult country for the first time in this expedition along the Rio Negro, the Rio Branco, the Rio Urari Cuera. I think Hamilton Rice portrayed the Amazon as his American audience want to see it as the empty space to be conquered. A space that was easy to put on a map. You could travel over it, you could dominate it with a technology. This portrayal of wilderness would have resonated with an American audience whose own recent history was one of conquering the American West and its Indian peoples.